Hello and welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, would you please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you will, hit the bell icon and you will be notified of new videos. Today I am finally getting around to showing you how I make my leather fountain pen pouches. And believe it or not, they're actually super easy to make. They just take a little bit of time and a little bit of elbow grease, but especially if you're doing them by hand, but they're actually very well worth it. So I have my Twisby Ecos in these two, and I made this, oh, I don't know, a year and a half ago, and it stays in my purse and takes a beating. So um, this is hand-stitched, you can probably tell. So it doesn't have to be like the most beautiful, because um, the stitches are a little wonky right here, but again, it's just my my own um, my own case, and that's not a bad thing. And then this is machine stitched, and if you have a sewing machine handy, you actually don't need a special needle or like an upholstery needle or anything. I just did this on my regular sewing machine, and it was able to sew through two pieces of leather. How about that? So anyway, you can do either or. So if you do not have a sewing machine, I'm gonna show you today how to hand make it. So, um, because honestly, in the sewing machine, you're just gonna take it and go zoop, and you're done. So this one is just gonna take a little bit of time. So how did I come about this? Well, I have a, a person I know who, is a interior designer and she gave me a bunch of sample fabrics. So there were little um, kind of little labels on here that said what kind of leather this was and some of it's really shiny, some of it is matte. Uh, since they're samples, this one is like, I don't know, deteriorated, something's happened to it. And so what I do is I cut the, the leather, and this is not fabric, this is leather, but you can actually make these with fabric too, like canvas or something like that. That'd be that'd be super easy. But I kind of like the leather pouches because I think they're way more durable. And so what I did was I took this and I cut it. So as you can tell, this is the same exact size of leather minus this strip. And I will show you no, nope, I will not show you what I do with this strip because I don't have them handy. So I actually make bookmarks out of the strip. So nothing goes to waste. And so it's a zero waste project, which is great. So out of this, I then make, I can get two single pen pouches out. Ta-da! So I cut this in half. So I just kind of go in half there. And then I... um. I made two different kinds here. So this one is the kind that my husband likes and that is a, it folds in and it is going to allow your pen to sit inside, but then he kind of likes this part kind of protecting the pen. I kind of don't care. Uh, for me, it's easier to grab it out of like this um, and they fit pretty snugly in here. Um, it would, what you can also do is just take a piece of leather if you're not sure, and you can just fold this up and see. So let me grab my ruler real, real quick and show you what dimensions they are. Okay, so it wasn't so quick, so I had to turn the, the camera off, but let me start with the first, the full length. So again, this is a sample and this is right at nine inches. And it's so it looks like nine by six inches. Okay, so nine inches wide, six inches um, height. And then I cut this section off. So then the piece that I'm utilizing is seven and a half, and again, six inches. Okay, so seven and a half by six is what is going to give you two uh the width of two pens now you could actually make this a double pen case which i've made for my friend and so uh you can you can totally do that you don't even have to get these done singly but i do like the single pen case because i think it's great to put in a pocket or whatever you might want to do 
So this is, can you see what that is? It is um, almost four inches. So this is 3.9 inches. And the height, of course, I didn't do anything to, so that stays. Now, when you fold it up to fit my Twisby, it is right just short of one, actually it's right at 1.75 inches. So let's see, is that correct? No, this one's more like, well, yeah, that's that's right. One, one and uh, three quarters inch, one and three quarters inch, although no, that's the same exact one. Wow, I actually replicated something. That is, that is amazing. All right, so um, I'm gonna do this and then I found this one red leather how about that and so I'm gonna do a pen case with that too but I found this oh okay to stitch you're going to need an awl a w l awl and then you will need some sort of I don't know some thread and this is just cotton crochet thread because I crochet and so I just use whatever I had on hand and then this is a just actually one of those um cruel kind of thick upholstery needles so you can uh use that and cruel is c-r-e-w-e-l not me being cruel but although I can be sometimes all right so I'm actually gonna take that out and we are gonna make the black case today so bear with me as I thread. Uh, oh, I got it. Wow. All right. So you're going to grab a bunch of thread. Oh, also, just so you know, you can actually just use a regular pair of scissors to cut the leather. Uh, so no really, no big time special tools are required. You can not even on camera. You can double this up if you want extra strength, um, but I am actually going to use this just single the way it is. So I'm putting a knot at the end, and then I'm bringing this tail in a little bit more so I'm not pulling forever in a day. We're gonna use the reds, do the reds later. I actually want, I'm trying to find my black cotton thread. Cannot find it, so I have a, like an upholstery kit that has some black on there. I think the red and the black is going to look pretty sharp. Although my daughter was telling me to do like a cream, but we're going to do black. So I'm folding this in half and it does not really want to stay folded. So um, you could poke holes in this and then go through it, but I actually like to, it's probably going to be slower, but I like to poke holes as I go. And so I am starting at that corner and I'm gonna come up. You can you can do it whatever way you want. Now I want to hide my knot. So I'm st starting on the inside. Yikes. Yikes again. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. So I have my knot on the inside and hidden. And so I don't know if you saw what I did. I just kind of poked the hole and then started from the inside. And then you're just going to loop this through. Mm -hmm -hmm. Is it even going through? I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell on camera what you're doing. So you can pull the knot out of the way so that you're not completely going through the knot. I think that's going through the knot. That's what was going on. Okay, so you just, again, pull this through. Now, if this is really hard for you, you have some tough leather you're working with, because this one's actually has a little bit of give and is a little pliable, you can use a pair of pliers to help you pull your needle through. And what I'm doing is I'm actually doing double stitch. I'm going to do a double stitch here and one at the end and I'm going to tell you why in one second if I can get this through. Why does this keep nodding? It's because I'm doing this on camera, isn't it? Yeah. No, actually it just knots anyway. I am trying to hurry. There we go. 
Yeah, I don't want like a 45 minute video. Okay, so I did a double knot and I am going to knot this again by just stitching through it. Just I just kind of went zoop up and around. Okay, so that's what I did here. So here, you can't tell, but it's a double, double stitch. And this one came up, but again, you don't have to worry about it. You can just put some glue down and set it down. And then here at the end, it has a double knot, double stitch as well. I think it looks like I started here and then went that way. Whatever, it doesn't matter. All right, so now I'm going to go to the next one. Now, if you don't want to freehand this like me, you can actually put little like chalk lines or dots or whatever um, to tell you, like, make sure you're doing it straight. Mm. Again, just for me, does not matter. And look, I'm pushing the needle through on top of the other leather. It, it's just, it's leather. It's all forgiving. Nobody's going to be looking at your stitches unless they're like that. And if they're like that, then I don't know, maybe they don't deserve a leather case handmade from you. I think there's that, that lovely beauty in handmade that it's not machine made. Some actual person made it for you. So, you know, if you have friends who are just very, uh, judgy like that you're gonna have to tell them to just chill oops I didn't even tell you what I just did I did a blanket stitch so what the blanket stitch does is it carries your thread up and over and uh, it's gonna give you a nice neat thread okay since I was jabbering let me show you how I did that all right I'm gonna just push this through again all right so I have the, the thread there I'm going to bring this in and through okay when I bring it through see how it's at an angle so I'm going to just go in through the top and what that does is it pulls your stitch straight ta-da and if you don't understand what I just did you can google blanket stitch and it will pop it up for you but it's a great little stitch to know and kind of keep handy all right so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something here because I'm getting kind of close to the edge, I am actually gonna go ahead and make a few holes here. Oh, okay, another thing. Through your awl, you don't just need to stop right there. If you make just a bigger hole, your needle will pull through easier. Um, do I wanna go here and then here? I think I do. All right, so some of these stitches may be just a tad bit close. Again, doing this by hand, so you can understand. I mean, and maybe you're a perfectionist, but if you're a perfectionist, you probably don't need to be watching me because it's totally not about perfection here. It's just about getting the job done. All right. I mean, and yeah, it, it'll look nice, but you know, it's not going to be like perfectly measured and all of that. I mean, those stitches are looking pretty good. All right. So through untangle untangle again and then when it tilts you just bring it right through and give it a nice little pull and here you can see it because the thread is a little bit lighter okay so now we're at the corner let me let me tell you what you're doing gonna do here do the same exact thing again okay if you're poking your holes through sometimes your leather's going to move and that's honestly the reason why I don't make them um, all go through at the same time. Erg. All right, so now you're gonna have to find the other one. Where did it go? There it is. Maybe I can find it through the back better, yeah. All right, so you, you kind of have to go back through and find these 
spots that you made again because the leather does indeed shift. So I'm gonna go to the corner. Oh, hey, no tangles. Okay, give it a good tug. Go up and through again to pull it. And that came up super close. So what I'm doing now is just helping it along with my, my hand to just pull it a little bit to the edge here, okay? I, again, just this is kind of do as you go. Now your other corner stitch is gonna go pretty close to this one, okay? Because if you're gonna go over here, it's gonna be a huge gap. So you want to put this one fairly close to this. You can probably even put it on top of the other one and then just stitch it again. You could do that. I, I like it uh, just, a, just a tiny smidge over just because then I can have two other stitches. All right, so this one, again, does not wanna go. It, it leans and so you're gonna just give it a, a pull and look, it gives you a nice little corner right there. And I'm going to do this one and then I will come back at the end of the video um, after I have it all done. So we're just going to do this one and then I'll show you the end in one moment. All right, so this, doing it again. By the way, this is also very forgiving. If you mess something up, you can just pull the thread out, no big deal. So don't, don't freak out, whoa, about what you're doing and how it's coming together. All right, so I've got my corner and I'm just gonna pull and do that. Look how great that looks already, doesn't it? All right, so I'm gonna just stop the video here and then come back to All show right, you. I'm back. Part. So I'm at the end, I almost kept going. So that, that doesn't look too bad, right? And the blanket stitch actually looks great from the front and the back. And if it's a little bit, you know, down and up, don't worry about that too much, unless you want to worry about that, then you can. And then um, this is at the very end. So I actually went through and made another stitch and as I was getting ready to pull it, uh, I wanted to show you what I'm I'm getting ready to do. So this is the second stitch in this in this last final um, spot, and you're gonna just pull the thread a little bit, and then you're going to go through that thread twice, just like that, and this, and then give it a good tug and pull it so that it's very very tight there. That's called a surgeon's knot. And if you cut it there and put it a little dab of glue, it should hold just fine. But here's what I do, just to give it a little bit of, uh, so it doesn't look so like homemade, um, which it is homemade. But I, I actually take the needle and I go back through. And again, like I said, that that is going to stay. And then I, like, it doesn't matter where you bring the needle up but I go through and make another surgeon's knot, which is just going through the loop twice. So like this is just a knot right here. If I was to pull that, that's just a knot. And then you're just going to go through it again so that it's a doubled up knot. And I am pulling that through. And you may not like the way that looks, but it just gives it that extra security. And now I'm gonna pull it, oops. Actually, uh, yeah, I have to think about what am I doing. All right, and I'm gonna just put this needle back through. And then pull here and then just cut inside. Okay, so that's the finished product. And let's go like that. So 
you know, there's a lot of things you can do, like just give these for gifts and your pen loving friends will love you for it. And uh, I looked at the time and to stitch it from beginning to end, um, when I went off the camera, it was about 12 minutes to just go through and I was, you know, chit chatting and doing a couple other things. So, you know, in a casual way, this takes about maybe half an hour to make one. Um, and so that includes, you know, the measuring, the cutting or not measuring in my case. And uh, you can just stitch those together. And then this one is done the same exact way. I just cut it here. Oh, and how do you know how to cut it? Well, I just kind of, honestly, I just kind of eyeball it. So I went like this with my pen and I thought, okay, you know, I probably need a little bit of um, space there and then I'm just gonna like curve it. And so I just did that. Um, so really I don't have a rhyme or reason. I just kind of take it, look at it. You can also use another case that you might have and do it that way. But I hope that this was useful and helpful. So tell me, are you gonna try to make one of these? I'd love to hear in the comments what you think. And again, the only tools you need are just a couple things. Hopefully you have those laying around the house. And I really hope you try it. And also if you try it, would you come back and let me know in the comments that you tried it? Because I love it when I hear from all of you on what you're thinking and what you thought of the tutorial and um, how you're gonna go about using this. And Father's Day is coming up, or a birthday, or golly, you know, Mother's Day, I don't know, Dog's Day. Just use it and put together a couple of these and have them in a stash ready to give or use them for all your pens. So try it out, and until next time, bye.